Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of The Nonprofit Show. We're super excited here today to welcome back our friend from Fundraising Academy, Pearl Hoagland. Hey, good to see you. Hi, Julia. So good to see you. You know, Pearl, I'm, I'm so excited about this conversation uh, because I've been on the inside loop for a while that Fundraising Academy, based at National University, was going to be taking on a certification program. And so I'm really, really honored that you would come on the nonprofit show. We could talk about it and kind of get some ideas on to how we can navigate this. I mean, you and I have talked about this so often, and that is we need to do a better job of elevating our profession across the board, right? Huh. And yes. you're here, my friend, you're doing it. Yeah, it's you're so right. And really emphasis on profession. It is a profession. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. we want people to want to go into fundraising. And while it's a beautiful thing to say, I fell into fundraising because it really <laughs> emphasizes passion. What about I want to go into fundraising and I'm going to get the education and training I need to do that, to be a successful fundraiser? Yeah, I, you know, this is the thing. I mean, I know in my lifetime, and I've said this to you privately, you know, I would have raised millions more for my community. And I'm, I've never been a paid fundraiser, but I've been a community fundraiser, right? And just kind of stumbly, bumbly going forward with passion. Not enough. You got to have more than passion. <laughs> So I'm just really excited and I'm, I'm so proud of you all for, you know, working so hard on this. And so we're going to really spend some time about what this looks like and what it should look like as you're trying to educate yourself um, and moving forward. You know, we get to educate you, our viewers and our listeners, um, because we have amazing sponsors and our sponsors include Bloomerang, American Nonprofit Academy, Staff and Boutique, Nonprofit Thought Leader, Fundraisers Friday, and your part-time controller. These are the folks that join us day in and day out. We also have this amazing cadre of co-hosts. They come from across the country. They're very diverse. They work in different parts of our nonprofit sector. And I get to have Pearl all to myself today, but um, I know you've been able to meet them and they are just completely amazing people. So Pearl Hoagland, Director of Fundraising Academy at National University, you come to us from San Diego, correct? I do. And that is where National University is based? Yes, we are headquartered here, but we serve students, I believe now it's 88 countries. We serve them all around the country, all around the world. Uh, priorities are access and uh, affordability. So yeah, but we are headquartered here in San Diego. I just love it. Well, I've got a witness to you um, watching the Padres play in the playoffs. Um, I got to see National University's logo sprinkled yep. throughout the stadium. That was pretty cool. Love that. <laughs> I know. I was like, oh, wow. So anyway, well, we are delighted you're here. And we want to kind of get started about this journey of Fundraising Academy at National University. Um, we know you um, through your, your different trainers and folks that have been on your cause selling cycle. But talk to us about how Fundraising Academy lives within this ecosystem of National University. Yeah, so usually I like to answer this question directly, talking about Fundraising Academy, but I want to share with you a quick story that I think really demonstrates this program. So it's nine years ago at this point, I was a student of the program. I was full-time development professional. Um, it was my first real professional development opportunity, and I went through the certificate program having very little fundraising experience. After going through this program, I was able to secure multiple major gifts. I was promoted to a bigger role in development and my whole just perspective of fundraising was so different. I approached donors confidently with excitement. I knew how to build authentic relationships with them and align them with the cause that they cared about. Uh, and I realized how beautiful relationship driven fundraising is that it's a partnership. So that is Fundraising Academy. It's helping fundraisers build authentic relationships with donors in a way that is intentional, 
and also strategic so that they can bring in more money for their causes and more importantly, importantly not burn out, stay in their careers, thrive and become the next generation of fundraising leaders. Well, and you know, you said something that just really strikes me um, and that is your confidence level. Yeah. I mean, wow, to, <clears throat> to feel that positive, you know, as we talked at the, the top of the show, you can have all the passion in the world, mm -hmm. but if you don't have the skill set, you can burn out quickly because you get frustrated and you're wondering, wait a minute, why didn't this work? You know, what happened? And Absolutely. second guessing yourself. So really interesting. And um, I, I think that the other thing, my observation is, um, Pearl, having worked with so many of your trainers on the nonprofit show, um, this is a very logical and natural process, mm -hmm. right? It's not a forced, yeah. you know, thing. Yeah, absolutely. And what I love is that it breaks it down. It's nothing new, right? What we're teaching is we're not saying don't do it the way you've been doing it. Just don't forget critical steps that you might have overlooked mm -hmm. that could hinder your ability to sustain that relationship with the donor and make a successful ask. So when when you say that, I hear you saying you can still be yourself and you and um, you're not becoming a robot or anything right. and, and and reading the script, so to speak. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Very, very interesting. Well, I'm I'm just so intrigued by this whole thing. And, and I really want to kind of dig into this next question, because. I, I think this is a fascinating discussion point and it is can cause selling and relationship driven fundraising. Can that be taught? You know, a lot of times we hear this in selling. Oh, there you're a born salesman or you're not. Mm -hmm. There's no in between. You got it or you don't. What do you think? I think one, yes, it can absolutely be taught. And yes, some people might be born with a sales skill, but the ability to sell someone, that's just one piece of the puzzle. When you think about our donors, well, first of all, our philosophy is anyone can fundraise. Absolutely. If you want to fundraise, you can absolutely be successful. When you look at donors, you don't just have one type of donor. They're all different. Mm -hmm. And sometimes one fundraiser doesn't actually mesh with a donor. So if our fundraising community represents the diversity of our world, you're going to be much more successful. I think when you think about what it means to be a really great relationship-driven fundraiser, it's authenticity. People mm -hmm. wanna build a relationship with someone who's authentic, who's genuine mm -hmm. and true to who they are. And then also adaptability, um, being able to recognize the different types of personalities and approaches and make people feel comfortable while still being true to yourself. And then practice training and practice you know you have to build confidence is huge no matter what your skills are if you're confident you can be a great fundraiser but practice learn how to show up in the world with different types of people and make them feel comfortable and you can absolutely be successful so you said something really interesting in the beginning and you mentioned that the b word burnout i'm wondering if you see a correlation between I'm not going to say like success necessarily, mm -hmm. but that burnout component that we don't seem to talk about with fundraisers, frankly, until it's too late. Like yeah. they're walking out the door, we're losing them or they're disengaging. Yeah. How do you see that fit, fitting into this training and this practice? So for this training and practice, we recognize that every single person that comes through our program has their own unique needs, challenges, and also capacity, time, financial. They might be caregivers or right, their job just doesn't allow them much free time, or they want to have that free time, which they absolutely mm -hmm. should have. And we basically want every student who comes through to be able to access the content they need and get the value of our program, no matter how much they can invest. We also mm -hmm. recognize that time changes, right? My time last year was a lot more limited than it is this year. And uh, so that's the other thing, we, we support lifelong learners. So mm -hmm. whether you have the time now or later, you can, you can still be a part of our program and decide mm -hmm. how much time you invest and how much money you invest as well. Wow, really? Um 
we're going to get into that more when we, we talk about what the costs are because the mm -hmm. costs, as you mentioned, man, there, there's so many different ways to look at a cost of something. It's not just the financial dollar thing, yes. but um, I'm really intrigued by, by your, your program and understanding. It seems to me like you've uh, in creating this project and, and this certification, you've been thinking about students and what their journey is because you've already been teaching them, right? I mean, right. this is not a new program. Right. It's really an, an interesting thing. Do you think that this situation has changed because of the pandemic and, and just the process? Or is it just kind of stayed the same and, and we just need to reframe it a bit? No, it, it it's changed and it's some things have changed. And I think we've also seen some things have remained true, which is relationships that you can build a relationship with someone no matter what. You might have to do it differently, right? Versus <laughs> over Zoom or um, different tactics to make people feel seen and to connect in ways that make them feel comfortable. So I think what the pandemic did was show us everything that's available to us. Uh, but yes, I, I we can't ignore the fact that a lot of things have changed. People's comfort levels, um, financial, socioeconomic, uh, health. There's so many ways in which we just have to be even more mindful um, and respectful of each other, just yeah. in general with this polarizing with the climate too. But when it comes to education, what it allowed us to do, it challenged us to recognize that we can create really meaningful learning experiences that aren't necessarily in person. Um, mm -hmm. But and in a way, it actually creates more access because more right. folks can engage. Right. I think that's the, the cool thing about this is that it just, mm -hmm. you know, it seems to me, Pearl, that when you, you get educated and you come back to your team, um, you bring everybody up. And if you have an organization that is, you know, working uh, with the concept of the culture of philanthropy or whatever, you're going to, your education and your knowledge points are going to bleed out across organizations in ways that you're building more soldiers of an yeah. army that, that hadn't existed. And I think that is really cool. You, you will probably never know that or be able to measure that, but mm -hmm. um, it's going to happen. And it, it, it's, I think a, a really profound thing to think that this certification project can, or, or excuse me, program can, you know, really amplify what fundraising can look like on a professional level. Yeah, I completely agree. And you talked about the culture of philanthropy, which I think is really important too, that our goal too is that one person goes through it and then perhaps their whole team as well so that they can speak that same language. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my gosh. It's so exciting. Well, let's get into the brass tacks because this is um, higher education. Mm -hmm. It is, I would say, modern education looking mm -hmm. at you know, um, a new way of learning. It's it has the ability to be flexible. Talk to us about the, the time investments, the financial investments. And then I'm going to throw in a, a, another thing, like where do you have to be in your life mm. to go through this certification process? Like, do you have to have achieved a college education? Do you have to be a, a certain age or have so many years in the field? Like, Let's start there. Yeah. Where do you have where does the student have to be? Wherever they are. They have to be in front of the computer. <laughs> I love um, it. <laughs> we we recognize that one, our fundraising community is so immensely diverse. When you in yeah. every sense of the word, your lived experience, career path, where you are, age, I, I just, you know, whether you've never fundraised, whether you are, want to be a better fundraiser or you're considering the profession, even if you're not necessarily looking at fundraising, but you're, you want to sell a cause or a product, right? You're a social entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. So we created this certificate with the knowledge that so many individuals could go through this program and get a lot of value out of it whether or not they are actually fundraising at this moment. Maybe they're looking for a new fundraising position and they want to have this on their resume, but also the skills to be successful. Okay. That's not how I thought you would answer that. That is fascinating wow. because um, it seems to me we do things when we feel successful, right? Right. 
Right. Because who wants to go to work every day or do something? And it's, it's a completely deflating experience, right? Yeah. I am fascinated by the concept that you could get education and get involved in this and then come out on the other side, raring to go. Mm -hmm. And um, ultimately coming into the fold of being a professional fundraiser. And at the same time, building a cohort of peers who can help you find that job or just be there for you uh, to provide that peer to peer support. I love that. So let's then drill down into the time investment mm -hmm. and, and the, you know, you mentioned a cohort, like what is your structure? Are yeah. you running like on a calendar, an educational calendar year? How, how are you pulling your, your cohorts in together so that they can get through this journey? So what's exciting about this program is it's actually a self-paced journey uh, with a makeup of different types of courses. So you can take this journey however your schedule permits. Uh, it's modular. There are different courses. They do not have to be taken consecutively with the exception of we have a prere prerequisite course, which is like a five-hour course. But other than that, you can take most of the courses in any order. So if you're coming into this really needing to improve your stewardship, you can start there and then take the other courses at any time. What, where the scheduling comes in is the capstone, which I know we're going to talk about, which I think is the most valuable piece of it. Um, okay. The capstone is a cohort model where you'll okay. develop some real tangible tools, which I know we'll get to. Okay. So then um, I love this because I'm intrigued by self-identifying like where you need help and then mm -hmm. starting or navigating through that. That's fascinating. Um, doesn't seem like higher education offers that flexibility or that flexible thinking a lot, right? It seems like we get, you know, we're pretty prescribed and you have to kind of go through, you know, these levels to get yeah. across that journey. Talk about the financial investment. And I ask this because, you know, now at this point in time of the year, a lot of our viewers and listeners have the ability to go back to their organizations and talk about professional development or scholarship. Mm -hmm. and, and how does all of this kind of fit into somebody's personal budget as well as their organizational budget? Yes. So we did a lot of research. We wanted to understand the market. What is the price, right? What are the price points for mm -hmm. such ty these types of trainings? Because our priority is to be accessible. Uh, yeah. We do not want funding to be a barrier to getting your education while recognizing it, we have to sustain it. So to mm -hmm. find that balance, the entire certificate, which is 125 hours, is okay. 2,500. Wow. Um, Yes. And that includes the capstone. It, it, it's all inclusive, which is which is we're very excited to be able to keep it low um, for anyone to be able to access. But then organizations can actually purchase licenses to reduce that price per license even more. So in essence, if you wanted to take your department. You could navigate that through. Yes. And how are you all with uh, Fundraising Academy and, and the certification program? How are you linking? How are you linking to um, like CFREs and and some of those those pieces? Yeah. So every every course right now is being submitted to CFRE, um, mm -hmm. and we're getting approvals. So we are confident that it'll actually be up to 125 CFRE credits, which actually satisfies the educational requirement. Wow. Now, disclaimer, we are still submitting them, but they have been approved so far and it's all our existing content. Mm -hmm. So the great thing is we know that the content itself is approved. We're just confirming mm -hmm. the hours, but mm -hmm. we feel very confident. Wow. Yeah. Amazing. So one of the exciting pieces of this is that not only are you navigating uh, new fundraisers or existing fundraisers into the profession, but possibly shepherding people more into the CFRE process. That's exactly. really tremendous. And we know that education for CFRE is so expensive. You have to get oh. credits and to be able to get all of that with $2,500. Mm -hmm. We were so excited about that piece too. Mm -hmm. You know, we want to create access to the CFRE. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Well, and you have one of the master trainers uh, of the CFRE sphere, Jack Alato, who's been yeah. on the show. 
Um, he does some amazing training. Uh, well, test prep is really, yeah. I would call it, you know, trainings uh, for people throughout the, the country. And mm -hmm. um, so this is like a logical thing because I would imagine your content is going to be super logical and fit in with yes. that testing. Yes, exactly. We actually, we partner with CFRE there. We really appreciate the team over there and um, want to ensure that our content is always supporting that as well. So yeah, but Jack is a huge part of this too, this, this product and the development of it. And the CFRE piece is always at the top of our minds. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's brilliant. You know, Pearl, I think it's, it's also good for you. Um, kudos to your organization, because when you talk about elevating a profession. Um, professional designations are important. Certificates mm -hmm. are important. Continuing education. Um, it's all rowing in that same direction. And so that's yeah. a really um, amazing, amazing piece of this. When you think about um, your organization and, and, and the journey of that student, you know, you mentioned the capstone. Mm -hmm. Explain to us what this is what the concept of a capstone is one, and then how you all have created this amazing opportunity. Yeah, so the capstone is the culmination of the program and it ha it can only be completed once you have completed all of the courses. Okay. Um, what the capstone is really is it supports real world application. The entire mm -hmm. certificate program is modeled to support real world application. What the capstone mm -hmm. does is it makes it tangible. So you leave the capstone, you create throughout that program, you create your own fundraising development plan guided wow. by a seasoned trainer. Mm -hmm. So you end your pitch, which you can use at an event when you meet someone on the street in a, in when you're making your ask or just presenting your cause to a donor, being able not to just create your pitch, but understanding the tools to create one based on your individual donors will allow you to position your organization in a professional, succinct and confident way. And then mm -hmm. having a fundraising development plan that you can bring back to your organization that can actually be activated. Uh, that is the capstone. Uh, the way that we look at it is often smaller nonprofits or even any nonprofit will bring in a consultant. That's what with. I was thinking. That's exactly yes. what I was thinking. Which is wonderful. And absolute consultants are amazing. We partner with so many. Um, mm -hmm. And one way to look at it is for $2,500, not only are you getting that product, but you're sending a, a staff member or yourself yeah. to actually be able to do even more than that. So that's one way that we like to look at it. You're actually upskilling yourself to do that work. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's exciting. And I'll share... Um, when I completed my MBA at, at National University, I had a capstone and it was a business plan, creating a business plan and I use it every day. So being able to now create that for our fundraising community, I personally know how valuable it is. Mm -hmm. So it's it's exciting. You know, I love this because the first thing that I that came to my mind was hiring a consultant that comes in and and reevaluates what all your tools are mm -hmm. and then puts it all together and then sends you on your way. But with this capstone project, it seems to me like it's, it's more than just getting that, that information. It's pulling it all together that works for you, yes. that you can do right. That reflects your personality. Yeah. And then that next piece, like how you're going to employ it. I mean, you, you use the the phrase fundraising action plan, but mm -hmm. talk a little bit more about that, especially if you are working solo versus working with your, your in-house group, what mm -hmm. do you think that's going to look like? So let's, you have this fundraising plan, which is wonderful. Mm -hmm. And what now what you need are the tools to do it. You need to right. conduct this outreach to your donors, right. Yeah. And, and know how to sell your cause and, and know how to even find like-minded donors. So that's mm -hmm. what the leading up to the capstone, that's what the entire certificate is about. It's teaching you how to actually activate your fundraising development plan so you can be successful, whether it's time management as a fundraiser. What are the mm -hmm. key things as a fundraiser that you need to prioritize? Mm -hmm. um, prospecting. How do you make sure that you are working smarter, not harder, mm -hmm. to find donors who have a higher propensity to give to your organization. 
need discovery, right? All of the steps needed to make sure that you're actually able to generate revenue from donors and more than that, turn them into champions for your cause so that you can, whatever your fundraising action or fundraising development plan is so that you can actually realize it and grow it over time. Wow. You know, so it really is running you through from start to finish mm -hmm. a whole process. When you, when you think about the capstone, is this something that you start working on throughout the journey or is it more like you get these, these other course segments done and mm -hmm. then you start on the project? Yes. You get the other course segments done, which are all self-paced. And then yeah. once you've completed those, you get scheduled to participate in the capstone, which is a cohort model. So it's it's still asynchronous. So the coursework mm -hmm. you could do in the evening or whenever you're available with mm -hmm. weekly deadlines, but no live required classes. So you have a mentor take you through it who's accessible mm -hmm. to you and you still don't have to sacrifice your own time and well-being to get it done. But over the course of those four weeks, that's mm -hmm. when you would complete the capstone and your pitch. Okay, wow. What do you think the reality is given how um, tough our industry is? I mean, right now we're in Q4 as you and mm -hmm. I speak. Um, not a lot of extra time for in yeah. the world of fundraising yes. <laughs> at this time. What should we think about when we look about making this investment? And and I'm, I know finances aside, just saying, okay, mm -hmm. how are we going to factor all this in to being professionals that are already working as hard as we can? So what I would say, and, and I'll think of my experiences going through my MBA as a parent, um, recognizing I have a partner. So the right. support system that you have, and also this certificate specifically is designed to not challenge, well, to challenge you academically and intellectually, mm -hmm but not to make your life harder. If anything, what it will do is support your daily work. Because a lot of what you're learning, you can apply the next day. So while it might be a bit more of an investment in time right now, meaning maybe in the evening, you have an hour or two that you're going to be dedicating, depending on how quickly you want to complete it, the next day you're going to actually approach your work differently. So you're saving yourself time. The ROI is big. You're saving yourself time starting the next day and then as, and you can complete it at your own time. Yeah. I love that you said that, um, that you can actually employ what it is you've been learning and you yeah. can test it and you can mm -hmm. practice it. I love that because, you know, in education, that's generally never an option, even for yeah. the returning student or the, the you know, the profession, professional who takes on additional education. Yeah. Super, super interesting. Well, Pearl Hoagland, it has been such a joy to, to welcome you back on to another episode of the Nonprofit Show, um, Fundraising Academy. Uh, we are just amazed by your work. I have personally seen it do great things um, across our country. It is really a valuable thing. And heads up, if you go to fundraising-academy.org, there's a lot of content on there that is free that you can learn from, uh, you can pull into your team. It's really, really robust and um, a lot of support there. So super exciting to have Pearl Hoagland, Director of Fundraising Academy based at National University. Thank you so much, my friend. Thank you for having me. Good to see you again. Great to see you. You know, um, I really want to be able to check back in with you as uh, Fundraising Academy navigates this um, process to see like what you all are learning and what your your students are saying about this yeah. exciting certificate and and how it's changing. Um, we've had a couple comments come in and one that said, thank you. This was awesome. <laughs> I love it. You're awesome. Whoever you are, you're awesome. <laughs> yeah, it's really cool. It's really, really amazing. Well, this has been fabulous, Pearl. And again, thank you so much for all you've done for uh, the nonprofit show and, and how you've been a, a major part of our ecosystem as, as we move forward. Um, you know, our presenting sponsors are everything to us and they allow us to have these conversations. Um, and and it is, it's truly an amazing collaboration. We 
are grateful for our sponsors. They include Bloomerang, American Nonprofit Academy, Staffing Boutique, Nonprofit Thought Leader, Fundraisers Friday, Friday, and your part-time controller. Um, you know, Pearl, every day we end with this mantra and um, I'm thinking it, it means different things to me. But today I'm thinking about like, the health of our brains and our minds and the health of our sector. Mm -hmm. um, and, and so thank you very much for adding something that's going to help the health yeah. of our sector. And um, so our message is this to stay well so you can do well. <laughs>